Hi, what can I get you today? I would like to have a double cheeseburger, please. Last Saturday, I had the same burger, but the patty was a bit dry and overcooked. Oh, I'm sorry for that. How would you like your patty cooked? I would like it cooked medium well, and please, no onions this time. Sure. Anything else? I'll also order some French fries, please. Last time they were mushy, so I hope they will be crispy this time. All right, it will be ready in five minutes. Thank you. Vocabulary In the context of cooking, overcooked refers to food that has been cooked for too long or at too high a temperature, resulting in a texture that is dry, tough, or burnt. The sentence, how would you like your meat cooked, is a question often asked by chefs, cooks, or restaurant servers to inquire about the preferred level of doneness or cooking style for meat. Here are some common responses one might give. Rare, medium rare, medium, medium well, well done. When describing a texture, mushy refers to something that is soft, pulpy, or has a spongy consistency. The word crispy is an adjective used to describe something that is firm, dry, and easily breaks or crumbles when bitten. In a culinary context, crispy often refers to the texture of food that has been cooked to achieve a desirable level of crispness. So, doctor, how am I now? When you first came here, you had a severe case of chronic sinusitis. We tried the nasal spray treatment, but it didn't show any signs of improvement. So, our last resort was to proceed with the surgery. And it was a tremendous success. The airways are totally clear now. I can feel it now. Before, I couldn't even breathe properly, and I had strong headaches. I'm glad that you can take a proper breath now. I'll see you back here in one week. Thank you, Doc. Signs of improvement refers to observable and positive changes or indications that suggest a situation, condition, or individual is getting better or making progress. These signs can manifest in various ways, depending on the context. For example, health, performance, economic conditions, personal development. Last resort refers to a course of action or option that is considered only when all other alternatives or possibilities have been exhausted or proven ineffective. It is a strategy or decision that is pursued when there are no other viable options left. Did you know that Betty is dating Henry from the HR department? Henry? Wasn't she dating Robert? the head of the marketing department? They broke up last week, and she's already dating Henry. But I sit right next to Betty, and I didn't know anything about that. In this company, it's essential to keep both your eyes and ears open. You never know what people might say about you. The verb dating refers to the activity of engaging in social or romantic interactions with another person, usually with the intention of assessing compatibility for a potential romantic relationship. The phrase breakup can be used as a verb to describe the action of ending a romantic relationship. When used in this way, it means to terminate or dissolve the relationship, resulting in the separation of the individuals involved. The phrase right next is often used to indicate something in close proximity or immediate adjacency to something else. For example, the grocery store is right next to the gas station. 
Our office is right next door to the coffee shop. The expression, keep your eyes and ears open, is a figurative phrase that means to stay alert, attentive, and aware of your surroundings. Did you see the price of these cookies? They weren't this expensive the last time I came here. What happened to the price? I agree with you. I remember when it was 50 cents cheaper. We can't buy as many things as we used to. Money is losing its value every day. I guess I won't be able to afford these things like I could before. I'll just put it back on the shelf. Maybe next time I'll take it. The phrase as many things as is a comparative construction used to express equality or similarity in quantity or number. Here's an example. I bought as many things as my friend did. The expression used to is commonly used in English to indicate that a particular action or situation was habitual or regular in the past, but is no longer the case. It is often employed when talking about past habits, routines, or states that have changed. Here is how used to is typically structured in a sentence. Subject plus used to plus base form of the verb. For example, past habit. Before I moved to the city, I used to go jogging every morning. Past state. She used to live in London. Past routine. We used to visit our grandparents every summer. I had my last phone for three years before it started lagging. Maybe it's time to get a new one. Do you have any plans to get an iPhone? I'm not sure because I'm quite happy with my Android. I remember you told me you wanted a faster phone. But iPhones tend to run out of battery faster. But you'll have a faster phone and probably no lagging. And you don't need to keep all the apps that come with Android. I almost bought an iPhone 14 last time I came here. But even after the release of the iPhone 15, they are still quite pricey. I'll keep my Android for now before I make a final decision. In a general sense, lagging often refers to a delay or slowness in progress. For example, in technology, if a computer or internet connection is lagging, it means there is a delay or sluggishness in response time. The phrase tend to run out is commonly used to describe a situation where supply or availability of something is diminishing or depleting over time. Here's an example to illustrate the usage. If you don't keep track of your expenses, you tend to run out of money before the end of the month. The term pricey is an informal adjective used to describe something that is expensive or costs a significant amount of money. Susan, where did you find this place? It was Jack. He found it on one of these short-term rental apps. That's nice. Thanks for inviting me. When did you book it? About three weeks ago, we got a good deal on this house for three nights. I can see that. Nice backyard with the pool. Short term refers to a brief or limited period of time. It is used to describe events, plans, goals, or situations that have a relatively brief duration. The opposite of short-term is long-term, which refers to a more extended or prolonged period. The word book can function as both a noun and a verb, and its meaning changes depending on its grammatical role in a sentence. I bought a new book at the bookstore. I need to book a flight for my vacation. 
When was the last time we came to the beach? I'm not sure, but maybe two years ago. Since it's been too long since the last time we came. How about you take a break from work and enjoy our free time? I wish I could, but I got a deadline on this project. Last month I was due to deliver another project and I didn't meet the deadline. So I have no choice but to finish this work while we spend time on the beach. A deadline is a specific date or time by which a task or project must be completed. Meet the deadline is a common expression used to convey the successful completion of a task, project, or assignment within the specified time frame. For example, Situation You are given a writing assignment at work, and the deadline for submission is Friday at 3 p.m. Outcome If you complete the assignment and submit it on or before Friday at 3 p.m., you can say, I was able to meet the deadline. In the sentence, I was due to deliver a project, the phrase due to is used as an adjective to convey the scheduled or expected time for delivering a project. Here, due implies that the delivery was anticipated, expected, or scheduled to happen at a certain time. This rooftop bar went through a big renovation last year. Oh, really? I didn't know about that. That's right. I heard they spent $75,000 to get it done. That's quite a lot. They got new chairs, tables, couches, the whole shebang. The floor was completely redone, and it got great reviews on the web. Did they change the menu as well? They did. Now they have more of an authentic Mediterranean cuisine. That sounds good. How about we order some calamari? Let's do it. It will complement this bottle of white wine from Napa Valley. In informal language, shebang is sometimes used to refer to the entirety of something, often in the sense of an entire situation, thing, or system. Today, the traffic seems really bad. It's the same thing every Friday. Last week, I spent 45 minutes with a customer who was headed to St. Patrick's Hospital. That's way too long to spend in a taxi. Taxes were affordable five years ago, but now they're expensive and we spend a lot of time in traffic. I understand, but being a taxi driver used to be a sustainable living. Now, we struggle to make ends meet. Let's hope for better days ahead. The phrase headed somewhere is an informal way of saying that someone is on their way to a particular destination or is moving in a specific direction. I'm headed to the grocery store. Do you need anything? In this example, the person is letting someone know that they are currently on their way to the grocery store. The expression make ends meet is an idiom that means to have enough money to cover one's basic living expenses. Example. Even though the cost of living has increased, they still manage to make ends meet by budgeting carefully. In this example, the person is able to handle their expenses despite the rising cost of living. Hey Gareth, it's nice seeing you at Central Park. Where are you working these days? I'm currently working as the branch manager for the department store downtown. That's nice to hear. Last time I met you here, you were a salesperson in a store in Brooklyn. That's right. I worked there for three years, and during that time, I applied for a position at this department store. 
I didn't see any future in my last company, so I decided to make a change. So, I applied for this job position, and fortunately, I got called in. How about you? I'm still with the same food company. After four years, I became the head of the marketing department. And with that, it came a nice salary increase. That's good to hear. How about we grab some lunch? Good idea. Let's go. The phrase get called in may suggest that you have received an invitation or a request to come in for further discussions or assessments as part of a job application process. Example. After submitting my application, I got called in for an interview next week. In this scenario, the person has received an invitation to attend an interview as a next step in the hiring process. Good morning, sir. Have you had the opportunity to use our self-check-in service before? I haven't used it before. This is my first time. Well, it's a very simple and efficient system that expedites the check-in process. First, let's scan your passport using the scanner on your right. Now I can see that you're booked on a flight to Rhode Island. Now, you just need to confirm your seat number and answer a few security questions. Now, we just wait for the boarding pass to be printed and you'll be all set for your flight. If you have any luggage to be dispatched, you can do so at the express drop baggage counter. Wow, that was quick and way easier than my last experience. The efficiency is impressive. The phrase express drop baggage counter refers to a specific counter or service at an airport where passengers can quickly and efficiently drop off their checked baggage. It's the second time we come to this hotel. And once again, they still haven't prepared our rooms. Yes, the same thing happened two months ago. The check-in was at 2 p.m., and they still didn't have our rooms ready. Now, even with the check-in time pushed to 3 p.m., the rooms still aren't ready. I remember the days when check-in and check-out were at noon. But I guess those days are long gone now. The last time I remember, I got a room upgrade because I had to wait for two hours. Let's see what we can get this time.